Hello and welcome to part 2 of Project Gunpowder. Uh, in the previous part uh, we uh, made uh, the uh, base plate and we started working on the barrel. Actually we almost we're almost done with the barrel. The only part that's left for the modeling for the barrel is to put the bolts in place. So we need six bolts here, two on each hoop at the top and six bolts at the bottom. Uh, and uh, that's it. So let's start doing uh, that. So I will uh, put the uh, 3D cursor somewhere by pressing shift uh, and right click. It doesn't have to be here in place and we press shift A uh, to add a mesh and we are in object mode of course. So press shift A, mesh and I will use a UV sphere. So this is a UV sphere. Okay, now I will go, it's huge, so I will go into edit mode and let me turn off these uh, normals and press S and scale it down and I will go back to object mode just to uh, bring it up a bit so G in object mode GZ and go back to edit mode by pressing tab I, this is the center uh, edge here so I make sure that I am in the uh, uh, in the face selection mode and uh, here between these two faces I will press hold alt and press here to select this uh, faces loop and press X uh, to delete the faces then uh, I want to get rid of this lower part so since we have a gap here we can just select one of the faces and press ctrl L to select linked faces and then press X F again to delete them okay now I want to fill this uh, hole here so I will go back to uh, edge selection mode by pressing N on the main keyboard or by coming here and pressing this icon and while holding ALT again I will uh, press the edge uh, here at the hole okay and this will select the whole uh, hole uh, all the edges that define this uh, opening here and then press F to fill them up with a face and while they are still selected I will press CTRL B and uh, create this uh, chamfer Okay, now this will be a small part. Uh, I don't want it to be very detailed, so I'll add by scrolling the uh, scroll on the mouse just one uh, segment. I will create it here and confirm with the left click. Then I will select all by pressing A and I want them to scale, I want to scale them down. If I press SZ now here in edge, uh, in uh, edit mode, this is what will happen and uh, the origin will be here away from the uh, mesh itself so I press ctrl Z so I have two options uh, the easiest one is going to uh, object mode so I will press tab to object mode and in object mode all transform happens with the origin in the center of the transform so I press SZ here and this will bring it down like that so this is squished enough for a bolt okay I remember to uh, just press N here to go to item and look here when we used uh, when we scaled on Z in the uh, object mode we uh, changed the scale here and since this is the modeling phase not the animation phase so we want this to stay at uh, applied at one only on all axes so I press Ctrl A and apply the scale and then I'll press right click and shade smooth now, I want to bring this guy here to be on these faces here where, where the uh, hoops overlap. This will be held in place in reality using uh, these bolts, two bolts here. So, uh, I will come here to the snap and uh, I will expand this menu and I will use the face, the snap to faces. And I uh, let's try this now, uh, press G and press Control to enable the snapping and bring it here so it's not working as expected so i want this to be rotated to be aligned to the face so i will come here again and align rotation enable this option so by selecting face and align rotation to target and now press g and press Control and bring it here 
Now, another thing is not is it's not using the center to align the center of the object, the origin. Okay, so I'll come here back here again and choose instead of snapping to the closest, I will snap it to the center. Okay, and try that again. So G. And here you go, this is the effect that we're looking for. Of course, this sphere is, uh, or bolt is still huge. But anyways, I will put it here in place and then scale it down. So it's easier to scale it here to see the size that I'm looking for. So G and snap it here, put it better in place. Yep, that's it. Scale it down a bit. Okay, that looks good. And remember, we're scanning in object mode, so always after scanning, Control A, then S to apply the scale. And if you want to know the exact size of this for this bolt, the way I have it now, it's 1.65 by 1.65 by 0.384. So I just have this at 1.6, 1.66, and uh, 0.4. Just uh, nice round numbers. I press Ctrl A, S to apply the scale again, and that's it. Now we want to duplicate this here. So uh, instead of pressing Shift D and bring it here, which will work definitely, I want to uh, duplicate linked. So what does that mean? So let's let's do it, and then I'll explain it. So instead of pressing Shift D, I will press Alt D, which is the shortcut for duplicate linked. And I'll just bring it here and press and hold Control to enable snapping, and put it in place. Now, what is how this is different from Shift D? Let's do this and to show the difference. I'll skip this selected and press Shift D. So it's, and bring it here to this face. We don't need three, I'll just to show you, I'll delete this later. So the difference between copy linked and duplication uh, is that duplicating linked or duplicating the object is that if this is the original and this is uh, an instantiation of it, but this both, they hold the same object data. To, uh, to explain this, let's change. I go to edit mode here. And look, when we go to edit mode with one of them selected, they both look like they're going to edit mode. If I select a face here and just move it around, look, both uh, objects are linked, okay, which is hence is the name. They are linked, and everything that happens to each one of them will happen to the other. Okay, so if I select this and go to edit mode and change this one, this will change too. If I select this, go to edit mode and change it here, this will change too. Well, look, nothing is happening to this guy here, okay? Because this is a copy, while this is a link, okay? So linked objects, whenever you change at least the mesh of one of them, the other one will follow, but not everything changes. If I select this guy here and change the transform so I make it bigger, this will not follow, okay? Not in object mode. Of course, in edit mode, if I make it bigger, the other one will be bigger. Okay, so transforms will not be copied from one linked object to the other, but everything you change here within the mesh will be affected. So I'll delete this guy. And the reason I'm using linked here because, see now after copying two of them and putting them side to side, I feel they are still a bit, little bit large. So now if I, all I need to do is to select one of them, go to edit mode and scale it down. And the other one will be scaled down too. Okay, it makes sense because they are bolts, okay? They are usually, they all move the same. So, again, I will select this guy, Alt, D, Control, and Hold to snap it to this face here, Alt, D, and I'm just repeating the same process here. And it uh, makes sense to, be, to have some variation. They do not have to be exactly in the same spot and exactly the same distance between. This is not realistic because this is all handmade uh, work, uh, making the battle. And uh, it's normal for things that's been done by hand to have some kind of little variations as long as they do the job. So Alt-D again, and I'm just repeating the same process here. And now we have six linked objects. If I go to edit mode in one of them, all of them will follow. If I change anything here, all of them will be changed at the same time. But we do not have these guys copied at the bottom. So uh, 
I'll just uh, go this the old way and uh, alt D bring this guy here. There's a way to uh, do it, which combining them and mirroring them, but it's uh, not worth doing it right now for this uh, simple uh, job. So I bring this here, and here we have all these bolts. And now the modeling of the barrel is done. So I just need to uh, tidy things up and put things in place. So I will select everything here. So I'm using the box select. Okay. So I just click here on empty area and drag. And we don't want the box, the uh, base plate. So I'll press control and select, click and drag and remove this selection. Now I want to put all this in one collection. So here everything was being done in the main collection, which is called just collection in the scene collection. Okay, so everything is here, including the lights, the cameras, the base, everything is one collection. I want to put the barrel, all parts of the barrel, in one single collection to this, uh, differentiate it from the rest and to be, make it easier to select in the future. So while selecting everything, I'll just press here with the mouse here on the uh, 3D view, I press M, and this will give me the menu of move to collection. And I don't want to move it in the collection that already exists. I want to create a new one. So I'll press new collection and I will call it barrel. Okay. And sometimes in order to differentiate in the uh, dark liner, to differentiate uh, visually the uh, objects from the collections, I give just the collection, I give it an all caps uh, name. So like this. So it make it easier to see the collection here, even though it has its own icon, of course, but still, yeah. Okay, so now, once we've done that, all parts of the barrel moved here inside the uh, barrel collection. Okay, so now we have two collections here in this uh, outliner. We have the collection that has everything except for the barrel, and we have the barrel itself, all parts of it. And now let's say we deselect this and we want to select it later. I see here it's a bit intersecting with the base. So I maybe want to bring it up a tiny bit. See, yeah. So uh, I want to select it. So instead of coming here and selecting all parts of it, okay, I will just uh, come here to the barrel, right click and select objects. And this will select everything within this collection. Now, this is very handy. I even, prefer to have a shortcut for it. So how to create a shortcut for something? Uh, let's right click here again and go to the select object. And see here, I already have a shortcut. It's Alt left mouse button. So if I come here, well, select this uh, collection and press Alt and left click, it will do this thing exactly instead of right clicking and going to select object. So how did I put this shortcut here? Well, anything here in Blender, every operation, if you just right click on it, you will have the option to add a new shortcut. So now, since I already have a new a shortcut that I made, I put there, I can hold only the option to remove the shortcut. So I'll remove it. And now this won't work anymore. If I press Alt, left click, it will do nothing. And I will put it again so you can watch. So right click on it, then to show this menu, select objects, and I will right click on this again and assign shortcut. Click this once. Now, everything you will click now will be, will be uh, recorded, let's say, as a shortcut. So I'll press Alt and hold it and press left mouse button. And it, that's it. Now, if I right click again on this, and you see that the shortcut's already assigned, Alt, left mouse, okay? so. I will alt left mouse click and move this on the Z a bit up. So G, Z, just a tiny bit. That's it. That's all I need. Okay. And now we have the model of the barrel uh, ready. Before I go on to modeling uh, some other parts like the cannon maybe or the uh, dagger or the gunpowder itself, I would like to just make an intro to shading and uh, materials in uh, Blender. I will not do the whole uh, shading, the whole shading process as you see it in the demo reel of uh, this tutorial, but I will 
start explaining few things about how to give a new material, how to edit the material to slightly just the basics as an intro. And later we will be making, of course, the uh, uh, materials for all the objects in the scene to make it ready uh, to render, as you saw in the demo. So first, let's have a look at the barrel. By the end of the lesson, how, uh, how will it look like? I'll just select the barrel, make sure it's selected, and come here to the material properties. And I already have a material made, so I will click this drop down here and choose the material. Now, nothing will be seen here in the viewport because we are in shading mode. So I will press C and hold and go to rendered view. And we will be creating this material in the coming uh, few minutes in the rest of the uh, lesson. So let's get started with our material. I will, with the barrel still selected, I will click the minus button here to remove this material. And now our object has no material whatsoever. So in order to create a new material, I'll just click this button here, new. And we have a material called material.001. You probably will have just material because I already have a material in my scene called material. So I will just rename this to uh, tutorial wood or you can name it whatever you can you can name it barrel or whatever you like and once we created this material you can see that here we have these parameters that are related to the material that we created so let's have a look at uh, some of these uh, parameters here so first we have this preview okay and this just shows you the material here in uh, this uh, small uh, panel and you can change the size of the object that uh, resembles this material here for instance this is a uh, hair for useful for hair material this is just showing you on a cloth i usually keep it here but feel free to experiment with these surface we have here at the surface we, we have something called principal psdf and we will move to the node system in a minute to see what is this principal PSDF here. And we have a whole bunch of other parameters here that we will explain some of them in this uh, lesson. So here we have a base color. And if I click this here and change the color, we see that this defines the color of this barrel. But practically, I rarely work in this panel here to edit uh, a material or to create a new material. Uh, the only thing usually I do is just click the button that was here, new material, and that's it. Then I move directly to the shading layout. So move here and click the shading. And we will see that here we have the 3D view. Here at the bottom we have the shader editor, which is this guy here, shader editor. And here usually you will be at the image editor, I believe, but I changed this to the UV editor. And I'll explain why in a minute. And here we have a browser. Okay. So what we're interested in, what we will be working with uh, mostly at the, for the end of this uh, lesson is uh, here, the shader editor. And within the shader editor here, we see these two nodes. We see the material output. Let me zoom in here. I'm just using the scroll of the mouse to zoom in. This is like just zooming in within the 3D view, but the middle mouse button to uh, move the, uh, to pan, uh, scroll to zoom in, zoom out. Of course, there is no orbit here. There is no need for it. This is a 2D uh, space. So we have these two nodes here. We have the material output and we have the principal BSDF, which we saw here, which is it, by the way. It's the same thing. And you notice here we have the base color and here we have the base color and they are bo both set to the same color I use here on the barrel. And if I click here to change the color to another color, for instance, it will change on the barrel and it will change here. These, are, these two basically are the same thing. They are the shader that's linked directly to the surface. Now, I don't want to use blue definitely for the barrel and I don't want to use just one solid color either. Okay, we want this to look like wood. So what I will do here is come and add another node. So, excuse me, I forgot to uh, turn on screencast keys again. So I'll just turn it on. OK, 
Okay. There you go. So I will hover the mouse here and press Shift A and go to Texture and I will add a noise texture. And I will link this color node here, output, to the base color input in the principal DSL. So you see both are yellow. And I will connect this color to the base color here. And we have this uh, rainbow noise, which is actually what will be generated by the noise texture. Now you see here on the top, we have another output called FAC, which stands for factor. And it's a gray note. If I link this instead to the base color, we get almost the same thing. However, it's in black and white, it's in grayscale. And this output here is gray because it's considered a non-color data, while the yellow is uh, the symbol of uh, color data. The, uh, this uh, purple-ish, for instance, is a symbol of uh, vector input or output. So here we have a drop-down menu. It says 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D. We will just stick to 3D. I won't uh, get in depth about this uh, for now. Scale. And let's try to fiddle with this. And when I increase the scale, we notice that the noise gets smaller. Uh, think about it this way. The more, the bigger the number you have here, there will be more noise in the same defined area. Now we get the details. And let me just zoom in here to show you the difference in details. And you might not see it instantly. See, this is a zero, and this is a full 15. Okay, and we have the roughness and we have the distortion. We'll talk about this later, but here in the grayscale view or black and white, it's not that easy to see. So uh, I wait until we have the material uh, at the final stage and uh, make the comparison with different uh, values. Two things I'd like to do first before we uh, continue working on our uh, material for the barrel. One of them is making sure that we have an add-on enabled. And I will go here to Edit, Preferences, and under Add-ons tab, I will just click here on the search and write Node Wrangler, and I already have it without so just make sure that you tick this box here if you don't have it already ticked. And this uh, add-on, which is built in in Blender, you don't need to download anything. It provides lots of useful uh, shortcuts and useful functionalities to the node system. Another thing I would like to talk about is that if we go here to the interface tab and under editors, we have the color picker type. Now, this is my preference. I use SV plus H, which is, I think, similar to what's in Photoshop, for instance. But by default, I believe Blender is at circle HSV. So what does that mean? Well, simply when you click here, you see this is what, as far as I remember, this is what you have by default in Blender, this uh, kind of uh, color picker. Uh, I don't like this. I find it hard to pick the color here, even though it's easier to control the value of the color. But uh, my preference is SV plus H. I, I just like to work with uh, this uh, color picker. I'm used to it, and that's uh, everything uh, about this topic to say. Uh, use whatever you like. Feel free to try several methods here, okay? Uh, and uh, choose the one that you like. So now I will close this uh, Blender preferences, and let's continue. So I was talking about the noise texture, and I brought, I brought this on because I, I want to show you how to use this factor here from the noise texture to separate, to provide a variety of colors instead of just one solid color as we were doing in this case. So I will hover the mouse over anywhere over the... Uh, shader editor and press shift a again and i will go to color and mix rgb 
when you see the mix origin we know we have uh, a method which is the mix and we have the fact again we see this fac which is factor and it's by default at 0.5 and we have two colors so i will just drag this color here to the bottom okay and click here and use the picker to copy this to start with and then make it darker bring it down somewhere a bit less saturated okay and you notice if i link this as is to the base color well the value got darker but the color what we have here is just a perfect homogeneous mix of these two values okay so it's like it's like we, we just got the median color in between these two colors and this would be it but i don't want this i want to use this noise uh, texture to differentiate between these two so i link the factor here the factor here instead of 0.5 i link this here and now this noise texture is controlling how it's controlling the distribution of these two colors at the surface of the valve and to understand better about how this is being how this is happening here well the factor you remember this noise texture it has dark areas and it has light areas the dark areas is going is leaning towards the top node the top uh, color the light areas is leaning towards the uh, bottom color and i would i would like to uh, elaborate more on this point here so here we have the factor again and we have the mix of two colors if i drag this factor all the way to one we get fully the color at the bottom this value one indicates like use only this color don't use anything here and if i bring this to zero we are now using only the top color here and we are not using any of the bottom color and everything in between is uh, a mix so instead of using this i am using the factor here linking to the factor so whatever is fully black in the noise texture we will use will use only the point that is fully black in the noise texture will use only the top color any point that is fully white in the noise texture will use the bottom color and everything in between will make a mix but now again if i look only at this noise texture and instead of reconnecting this here remember the add-on we just enabled no wrangler it has a very nice shortcut if i hover my mouse here over the noise texture press ctrl shift and hold and left click on it this will automatically create a node called viewer and link the node i clicked with ctrl shift held and to the surface so we have a preview of this node alone without the other nodes in this. okay so you see here we don't have really like anything here that is 100 percent black perhaps we have white but we don't have black so what if i want to increase the intensity control let's say the levels uh, to make some parts darker to make the contrast hard harsher than what we have here so this is where we will go with uh, uh, using the color ramp node so I'll press shift a here and i go to converter and go to color ramp which is the third from the top and click it and now the second phase of the operation is to position it somewhere in this window in this editor window so i will just drop it here over this noodle and will automatically link it so nothing happens now because we have a full gradient between white grading actually between white and black so if i drag this node here and bring it in closer to the white see the black area we have now full black and it's expanding okay until it's almost like there is no white anymore and if we do the opposite here so we're expanding the white areas and we almost have no not even 
very slight gray and take it all the way down we have it. okay so if i want let's say increase the contrast here between what's dark and what's light i can simply bring the black in and bring the white in. okay and please feel free to experiment with this just change these values here move them around and look what happens also, this node is called color ramp, so you don't have really to use only black and white. This is by default, but you can change the color here. Just click somewhere near this node, this uh, color input here. And you see here this color. Click it and change it to whatever you like. And this will change the value. So go back to black, because we won't use it as a factor. So now I will increase the intensity here a little bit. Increase the contrast, sorry, and bring this color here in, to use it as a factor instead of the factor here. And now let's look at what we have here. So I, I will re use Control Shift and left click here to reconnect the principal BSDF. And let's look at the effect here while the full shader is in uh, action. So here I'm increasing the intensity and the presence of the top color. And here I am increasing the density and intensity of the bottom color and increasing the contrast. So this is how we control the relationship between these two colors. Now there are lots of textures, not only the noise texture. Press Shift A and go to Texture. You'll see that we have multiple images, image sequence, Greek, Feel free to, to look at them, feel free to experiment with them. But for now, I will be using the noise texture to create the uh, wood texture. But before we continue with that, I would like to speak about UV mapping. What is UV map and how to prepare one to use it for our shading? Well, think of a UV map as slicing a 3D object and stretching it on a on the floor on a 2D plane okay so in order to be able to give it color so to paint it in a way okay so imagine we cut this barrel just isolate this and I will go to the material preview so if I cut this barrel here and unwrap it and put it on the floor it will be like a plane Okay, this is similar to unwrapping. It's providing an unwrapped version of the 3D object in order to be able to apply a texture to it. And this texture doesn't always have to be uh, an image texture. Like in this case here, we're using procedural texture. And this noise texture here is called a procedural texture. So I'll press the forward slash in my numpad again to exit the uh, local view. And uh, I'll just shift right click here to move the 3D cursor and let me just explain a bit more about this. So in the, by default in Blender, all basic mesh objects like uh, the cube, for instance, they all already have provided with the uh, UV map. So if I go to edit mode and I'll change this here back to the uh, UV editor. So just click this click on here and go to UV editor and you see here the representation of the UV map of the cube which is provided by default and making sure that this icon is checked if I click this face here you see its uh, representation here and same applies for this face and each of the six faces of the cube they have their equivalent in the UV map so I hope this view here while looking at the cube makes it easier to understand what a UV map is. Same as with the sphere, let me create a UV sphere, for instance, and press tab to go to edit mode. And this is the UV map, the default UV map provided by Blender of the uh, UV sphere. And you see these triangles here at the top are the uh, North Pole and the South Pole. See, this is the North Pole of, uh, or the top pole of the UV sphere. And uh, here at the bottom, 
we have the bottom pole of the sphere. And each one of these squares here, or rectangles, is a representation, is a mapping of a face in this object. And if I select this ring, for instance, this is a tear in the map. So I wish this is clear now. And we want to provide the same thing here for, for our barrel. Now, I already have a UV map for the barrel, but I will scrap it and uh, do it again to uh, show you how do we do, what's the best method to do this. So, if you notice here our barrel, our material, I didn't make in the geometry, I didn't make blanks. And usually these barrels I made are made uh, using pieces or planks of wood. Okay, because this the distance between these planks once the uh, barrel is assembled is very insignificant to be represented uh, with uh, geometry. So I left this small, very fine detail, surface details, to the material rather than doing it in the geometry. I'm saying this to explain that whenever we have a line going here that represents a plank at the edge of the plank, I want it to continue exactly in the same place here in order to look continuous, to look one piece, pieces of, uh, of the planks themselves. So let me just go back here to edit mode and I will delete this UV map we were looking at. I will go here to the object data and I will go to the UV map. This might be like a collapse, just expand it. Select the UV map and delete it. And now this is our object without a UV map. Nothing changed here in the viewport because we weren't using it to begin with. And now I'll press the button, the plus button, to create a new one. And go to edit mode again. And select all. And this is what we have. Each square, each face here in the object is using the whole area of the UV map. What I will do is I will select one face here and I'll press A to select all faces. And this you notice it will stay kind of white with white borders. This is the active face. And selecting it further and selecting with A all the other faces keeps it active. So while the mouse here on over the uh, 3D view, I will press U, which stands for UV mapping. And I will choose follow active quads. So all quads here, and this is important, quads, we're talking about quads, not faces. And a quad is a face that has exactly four vertices at the edge. Even some, sometimes you'll see a face that looks as a square, but it has more than four vertices. That's not a quad. A quad doesn't matter how it looks like. The important thing is that it has only four vertices and exactly four vertices to define it. So this method will work only with quads, which is fortunately what we have here with the barrel. So I press U again and follow active quad. And I'll use the default method, which is length average, and press OK. And zoom out. And now this method of mapping this face is used for all attached quads. So even if they are not, of course, attached directly, it will be uh, using this, the method of this uh, face to uh, unwrap the whole barrel. And uh, I believe it doesn't get, get easier than this. This is very easy. And this is uh, amazing, actually, to have a UV map this easy and this fast. But they are huge, so I press A if they are not all selected, and press S and bring them down, because we want to we want all the maps to be contained, all the faces to be contained within this square here. And I, you can use here, like for transform, the same method that you use in 3D view. So S is for scaling, uh, scroll is for zooming in and out, also for navigation, G is to move, and R to rotate, but I don't want to rotate anything right now. So, 
make sure you have this icon here which says UV sync selection and this syncs the selection between the uh, UV mapping here UV editor and the mesh itself in the 3D view. So every face I select here shows where it is on the mesh. Now you see here we have this kind of uh, an, an edge here. So let's see where this face is. Oh, there it is. So this is the top edge of the barrel. And where that face is? Oh, it's beneath it. And that face is on side. So this whole thing is rotated. So I'll select everything again and press R and input 180, 180 and press enter to rotate it 180 degrees. And let's check that again. So we have this one, this one, this one. Oh, okay, now we have them correctly oriented at least. But we see here that the bottom the one underneath this one here is not here. It's actually uh, there and it's fine and everything underneath it. So I will just fix that. I will select, drag, click and drag, select all this line of faces here, press G and bring it here and make sure you're in the, uh, while this is enabled, make sure you're in the uh, faces uh, selection mode in the UV editor because if you are in the, uh, vertex this will get a bit messy see it's not only this selection that's moving so make sure you go to the faces and press g and bring it here and now just to put it exactly in place i will come here and make sure i'm using vertex and closest and effect move and press g and bring it here to this vertex and press and hold control to activate the snapping and then confirm with the left mouse button. And now you see that each face is in place. Okay. And now our UV map is ready. So I'll just over here over the 3D view, press tab out of edit mode into object mode. And while selecting the noise texture, and only the noise texture, I will use another very nice shortcut provided by the Node Wrangler add-on. I press Ctrl T. And Ctrl T creates two very common nodes attached immediately in place into the noise texture or any other texture you're selecting. And uh, these nodes are the mapping node and the texture coordinate. And it's the usage of this combination is very common that this is why the node render uh, developers thankfully saved uh, every Blender artist hours of uh, just adding these two nodes manually. And this is not the beauty of it only. Let's say we have another material output. So I will just click here at this material output, Shift D and bring it here. And now this is our output. And notice that once I activated, I clicked this output here, everything turned black. Uh, the activated material output is what Blender will use the uh, chain of nodes to give material to. So you can have multiple material outputs in the same material, and you can activate them by clicking on them. And the last active material output is the one that will be showing in the viewport. So I just copied this to uh, show you something. So I will also come here and press Shift A and add another shader. And I will add also another principal BSDF shader. So I'm coming shader, principal BSDF. And if you can't find something, let's say, where was this? Was it in vector? Was it in shader? Was it in input? Just search here and write shader, for instance, or let's say principle. And here we have the principle PSC. So I'll drop it here. Control shift and click to link it to the surface or simply just drag the noodle from here to here. So like this. And now with this shader selected and careful not to be to select many 
nodes, just one node selected. I'll press Ctrl T and notice that automatically Node Wrangler added for me an image texture and mapping node again and texture coordinate. And this time the UV is the one that is attached to the vector, while here it attached the generated. Because whenever you're using an image texture, like 99.99% .99 you will be using a UV map. And this is a representation of the UV map we just made. This UV map here we just made for the bar. Okay? So I'll click and drag and select all of this and press X to delete them. Then go back to our original uh, material and I'll just press N to hide this panel and make this bigger so you can see better. So again, we want actually to use here for this noise section, even though it's a procedural uh, node, we want to use the UV map we just created because I want to stretch this noise on the z-axis okay so this really doesn't look like wood veins by any means unless we're making mahogany and still doesn't look like it and you see this seam here this is where the edge of the texture ends and the texture from the other end starts on the uv map okay but never mind this won't be noticeable in a minute so press tab again to object mode and I will come here to the mapping. This is where we control the uh, mapping. Well, as it says, self-explanatory. So I'll come to the scale after attaching the UV to the vector and increase the scale on the Y. Or actually let's decrease it. And put something like 0.1. So you see, I decrease it here on the Y and it's affecting what looks like the z-axis. Well, because we're using the UV. And remember, the UV is a 2D value, not 3D. And it is mapped to the barrel. So if I click here, if I go to edit mode, every, remember, every face here has its own representation. And this noise texture, imagine it's mapped here. When we stretch it, on the y-axis, and I need to explain that in a 2D space, y is the uh, vertical axis and x is the horizontal axis. So when we stretched it on the y-axis, it actually stretched here on the barrel top down. And you notice that in order to stretch it, I increase the value. Well, mapping uses many methods. By default, it's set to point. But since we're working with a UV map here, I would go here and use a texture instead. So just click this drop down and use texture. And texture works the opposite kind of as uh, input. So look here, it's squished now because we have a small value. So instead I will decrease this again and take it somewhere. Let's put it to three. And at the same time, I will decrease the X value. So let me put it to point two, okay? And this started to look a bit like uh, uh, closer to, let's say, to uh, wood veins. But I need to fiddle with the parameters of the uh, noise texture to get better presentation. So let's look here closer at this texture. And let me change the scale so I will increase the value of the scale here or decrease it. Let's zoom out a bit. And I'll exit edit mode because it's becoming annoying this set. So when we increase the scale, the pattern gets smaller. And when we decrease the scale, it's the opposite. So I will use 20 here for the scale. And I want to increase the details. I would set to the full action. And let's try here if we can have a look at the detail, the effect of the detail. So bring this to zero and have a look here what happened and 15 we're getting more details here in the base roughness on the other hand i will set it to let me just try see we have more like tiny it started really to look more like wood 
even though it's like one piece of food. But we will talk about the planks later. So let me just put it here to a nice round number, to 0.9. And distortion does this. It gives us this swirls and distorts this pane to look even even more like wood. And I am I'm fine with this, actually. I'm fine with this look. I like this uh, output. So I just put a nice round number, 2.5. Let's say, okay, that looks good. And we're done with the wood. Mm, well, not exactly that. We're done with the color of it. Okay, but this surface still looks too plasticky to me. And let's have a look here at the at our shader to see what else can we change to like make it look more realistic-ish. So so far we all we were only fiddling with the base color. Everything we've done we've done only with the color. But we have many values here. Subsurface, I'll leave it for later. So let's stay clear of this. Metallic is, well, it's metallic and we're working with wood, so we'll talk about that later too. Let's jump directly to roughness. And let me increase this value here to the end to one. And look what happens here. Well, it is it is fully rough. And let me bring it the opposite way to zero. And zero turned our barrel into a wooden mirror. So this is, uh, in a nutshell, the roughness, okay? So we, we need to use somewhere in between, but of course, we don't have to use only the slider here to decide, decide the roughness. See, we have this input uh, node here, and that means we can use any texture to control the roughness too. So let's do that. Let me bring the factor of the noise texture here, and hook it to the roughness and let's see what we have just give it a second to calculate and yes look at the reflection here now where you can see it better and it started to give us some details here to the surface and of course just like we did with the color ramp here with the color to control the intensity the contrast between these two values we can use the same here so press because now the roughness is using the output of the factor here as is. Okay, this is what the uh, roughness is using. And we want to control it better. And to just let me elaborate more here, I disconnect this. And again, remember when we took this to one, this became fully rough. There is like, it's totally full. It's, it's the very definition of a rough surface. And when we took it the other way to zero, it turned into a mirror. So, white and black representation is zero and one. Whatever is black is a, a representation of zero, and white is one. So when we connect the factor here to the roughness again, just like what we did here, the black or the zero was using the top, and the white was using the bottom color. Here, the zero is making the roughness at the point where we have black is making it uh, fully uh, reflective. And the one or the white is making it, giving it the value of one and giving making it fully rough. And uh, this is how we get these variations here. So here you see there is no uh, harsh reflections, which means we don't have black. And we don't want really any mirroring effect, but the thing is, what's going on here now is that the darker color is more reflective than the surface of the barrel, which is the lighter color, which is the, uh, the inverted effect that we're looking at. So I will press here, I will press Shift A and add a color ramp and put it here over this noodle. And I want to invert this. I want the white to be here and the black to be here. So I can drag them, okay? Or I can simply click this drop down here and sit and choose flip color wrap so it will flip the color. So now the darker color here is more rough than the lighter color, okay? And again, I can increase the uh, 
contrast between the dark and the uh, rough. Okay, this way. But we, we don't have anything that should be fully reflected. So instead of using black here, while this node here is selected and this color here is representing this color here, so I'll click and put it to, hmm. uh, yeah, this looks uh, good. So if you are in RGB, you will see that you have RGB and you have the color here because it's gray, it will be the same in all three. And we have here, which is the alpha or the transparency. Let's not touch this one. But if you are in HSV, you will have value. And I will just enter it here, 0 0.04 for the dark. So instead of black, we have this dark here. And white also, we don't have anything here that should be fully white. So again, after I select this, I will click here on the white and make it a bit darker. So a 0.75 of the value would be good. And I will control the position here. Just pick a nice angle here to look at the reflection. Uh, well, this is an artistic uh, choice now, and uh, you choose whatever suits you better. But for me, I think a point four for the position for the light uh, color here, and a point seven four for the dark is a good uh, combination. Okay. Now. The other thing I am going to do here is I need to have some... We have a variation in roughness, we have variation in color, but we don't have a variation in... Uh, we don't have any extrusions, we don't have anything caving in, which is what you expect in wood used in barrels. Okay, not even in barrels, even in uh, furniture you would see this sometimes, but in uh, less contrast. So, I, I want to use the normal here to create bump. So I can just come here again to the noise texture and use this factor and link it to the normal. But in this case, we better not link it directly and see here immediately we see a disastrous effect on the barrel. Because here we need kind of an adapter and this is called the bump mode. So press Shift A and go to vector and choose bump and use this to determine which is extruded, what, what is extruded and what is not. And you still see the bad shading here because for some reason this linked to the normal, which is not what we want actually. We want to use the factor here to the height of the bump. So remember always, your factor, whatever you're getting it from, noise texture or image texture or Voronoi, whatever, you want to hook it to the height in the bump and then you take the normal of the bump into the normal here. And also by default, these bump values are a bit of crazy. Uh, so strength is set to one and this is set to one. And this is, I believe this is like one meter. So let's bring this down like 0.3 and bring the distance down to 0.2. Okay. And uh, actually it's still too much, so I will bring it to maybe 0 0.1. And we want this to be subtle. This is not, uh, after all, not a piece of uh, raw wood cut off to, out of the tree directly. This is processed wood to make the barrel. Okay, so it just gives it a nice touch here. And if you want to, if you get closer and look at it closer here, you'll see that this box, let me just put this at point three again to have a better look at it, see what's going on better. So you see, it's kind of like, it's like wavy, okay? And we can control this again, and we will use another color ramp. So shift A and convert, a uh, converter, color ramp, and drop it here. And we can create more of a plateaued, uh, or more, uh, constant uh, transition between what's extruded and what's uh, inclined. So if I bring the black in and bring the white in here,
and see the effect here starting to show. And bring them close together. And you see here, we don't have this very grainy texture anymore. We have more of a surface that looks like it's being smoothed by uh, friction and by using and uh, by age, okay, and by moving from hand to hand and uh, being stored on the ship. And uh, this is the effect actually I'm looking for in this barrel. But I still believe the color is still too dark here. And uh, I want to change this lighter color actually. So I'll click this here and bring it to more less to, to a less saturated and lighter maybe even beach, not even brown. Okay, and uh, I'll, I'll stick with this for now. So now uh, we're done with the wood. We still uh, need to make it look more like planks rather than uh, this barrel is being carved out of one piece of wood. So this is where we will add the bump. Okay, but not to this texture. This texture is for the wood, but we want to add another texture, another shader now. And we will make a factor to give it this uh, plank shape. Okay, so I'll just move this uh, material output a bit uh, further from the principal BSDF here to make room for another shader. And press Shift A. And I will add another principal BSDF shader here. Okay, and this is physically based uh, shader, by the way. I should have said that from the beginning. So this is a physically based shader when you're working with uh, realistic material, when you want to give a realistic uh, material uh, effect, you, you, uh, you, you'll be safe working with principal BSDF. Okay, so I'll just come here to the base color of this principal BSDF, click it and choose a dark zoom in here, choose a dark brown, and of course we cannot see anything right now, any effect on the viewport, because uh, this shader is just hanging there in the air, it's not attached to anything, and definitely not attached to the material output. So in order to combine these two shaders, we have uh, a very useful node, which is called a mixed shader node. So press Shift A, and go to shader, is it under shader? Yeah, yes, yeah, mixed shader node, okay? And we connect this node to one uh, input and this node, the other shader, to the other input. And we mix them, just like we mixed colors here. But this is for shaders and this is for colors. So instead of doing this, uh, let's uh, use a very useful uh, other shortcut from uh, uh, Node Wrangler add-on. So I will hover here, select this guy, press and hold Control Shift and click and hold right click, right mouse button, and drag it to the other shader. And see, they turn green. We have this green border and this green link in between. And then let go, and automatically this creates a mixed shader. Okay, so now what we have here is a mix of these two shaders, like what we had here is a mix of these two colors. Simple as that. But we want to use a factor. We want to use a way to tell where to use this uh, dark brown shader, which is, has a roughness of 50% and uh, doesn't have all the information that she, this shader has. So let me control shift and left click to see this again. And control shift and press here to see this alone. See, this is a very basic shader, okay? But this is where we want what we want to see where we have this seam lines of the planks. So I press Control Shift and click here again to show the mix of it between. And I will use what is called a texture, a wave texture. And yeah, the sound doesn't sound like plank texture, but yeah, it, it will do the purpose. So what is this texture? Well, I'll press Control Shift and hold and left click to see what it looks like and this is what it looks like so it's uh, another texture here we have the uh, noise texture we pursued introduced to and this is the wave texture okay so again we have the scale here just like in the noise uh, texture 
we have distortion, we have detail, which works better with distortion. Okay, so we have detail. And detail scale. And detail roughness. And phase offset. So we have other parameters related only to this wave texture. And here we have bands and we have rings. Well, we will stick to bands because this is what Of course, we have the X and Y and Z. Determine how this is distributed. Let me just bring this distortion back here because we want it less distorted. So first of all, let's let me get back this get this back to X and as it almost was when we first created it. And remember, we created a UV map here for the barrel, which we use for the wood texture. So let's do the same here. I press the wave texture and press Ctrl T to bring the mapping and the texture coordinate. And in case for some reason you don't have Node Wrangler or you didn't wasn't able to activate it for whatever reason, this is just press Shift A and go to vector and choose mapping, link vector to vector, and press Shift A and go to input this time and choose textured coordinate, put it here and link it. Well, when when we press Ctrl T, it was like this generated, which is the default for any texture except for the image texture, which is UV. But here we want UV2 even for this one. Okay. And look, we have here the kind of our planks. Well, we need less of these, uh, more actually, more planks. So let me try here to increase the scale back to five, which was by default. And uh, let's try six. Oh, that looks fine. And uh, let's use this as a factor between these two guys. So I'll link it to the factor here for the mix shader and press Ctrl Shift and left click to link this to the surface. And this is what we get. Well, we have like more of a shadow here than a plank. So we need to increase again the contrast between the white and the black, and we need to make this black very narrow. So again, what do you use? Well, color ramp node comes to the rest. Shift A, convert, and color ramp, and drop it here on this noodle. And I'll say that again. We need the black line to be a thin line from top to bottom, and we want the white to be a flat white with no, with very little gradient in between here. So I will just here, Select this white and bring it to the left. Oh, it's inverted. So white is playing black and black is playing white. So what I will do is flip color ramp and bring the black here. And now we have the lines of the planks. Still too thick if you ask me. So let me zoom in here. And in order to control it better, I will use the value input, the input rather than just eyeballing it here and dragging it by hand. So even with 0 0.003, it still looks a bit thick. Okay. So let's try here another method of uh, wave texture. So we have sine. Let's try triangle. And it looks like triangle gave us a better. Let me. Just bring this back here. Yeah, it will give us a better control. Still too thin at 0 0.009. And I'll just bring the black here to the pole to see the difference. Let me show the difference between this sign. This is what we have by default. We have the soul, and this is what soul looks like. This is what soul looks like. It looks like a gradient from black to white, actually. And this is. By the way, new in uh, Blender point three, Blender three, I guess. Triangle. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. So this works better for us. Okay, so I believe using linear hold here, of course, have color around and using triangle in the wave texture. I believe this is this looks okay. Okay, for planks, for the barrel, maybe even a bit thicker. So let's try to put this to 0 
Point two. Point zero. Yeah. Point zero three, for instance. Yeah. Point zero three. We 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 need to we need them to be distinguishable from a, a distance, but to look thin at the same time. And let's fiddle here with the distortion a bit. So because they might not be like very very clean, of course not this distorted. So I believe. Uh, hmm. Do not to overdo it. I would leave point two is a good value. So it gives us kind of like a bit of a, a not too clean, not too machine clean cut. Details uh, it won't even show at this distance. Doesn't make a difference. Detail scale. Oh, detail scale makes a difference. So not too much. I put to two, and I will leave this to you actually to experiment with it and use the uh, value that you see fit. Okay, but for now it doesn't really look like there's separate blanks because what we're using now we're using actually for a difference between two shaders, which is actually this one has a bump of wood, but this has no bump at all. Okay, so I want to use this as a factor for a bump now so again i'll come here press shift a vector bump another bump node connect the normal to the normal of this shader which is the shader of the cut of the uh, of the slice of the blank and i will use this here node chain that we just created for the blanks so collect connect the, uh, let me just make this bigger. So I'll connect the color here to the height again. And control space, go back. And let's give it a second to show us the results. And yes, you can definitely see here kind of a cut. See here in the wood. But perhaps I don't want it to be this clean cut. I want to have some, for the bump only, not for the color. I want to have some uh, gradation here. Okay, well, here it looks nice, but here it doesn't look nice at all. So I will use another color ramp here. And I will connect the original wave texture to it. To the factor here and connect this instead to the height okay things got messy a bit and wait for it and now i will control the distance here between these two guys to control how steep i want this cut to be and actually you know just leaving it here at full extent looks even better but still, we have a problem. This looks like a barrel that's just been made, okay? And uh, I know we said that later we will add the dust and the uh, dirt on the barrel using the texture painting, but still, this cuts here, this distance between the planks looks too clean. There should be like dirt and different variations here in between these planks, because it's a used barrel, right? So, or at least that's what we're trying to make. So I want to use another factor also to give it a variation. And I will use again a uh, noise texture. Okay. And let's control shift click this guy here. And the noise size is huge. So I will scale it. Mm, yeah. Okay. Okay, now, this noise texture, I want to combine it somehow with the dirt, with, with the uh, steam, with this cup between the two planks, to give it some variations here. Yeah, I don't want this to be like one line with one thickness going top to bottom. Okay, I'll just like see, like there are dirt, there is dirt here and some dust. 
uh, to give it the uh, feel of being all used barrel. Let me just click here at the color round and look what we have here. This is the factor we're using for the uh, separ for, for the shaders. So white is using this slot in the next shader, the bottom slot, which is the dark mixture. And the black is using the top slot here, which is the uh, our wood texture. And just to make things easier to see, I know this started to look intimidating now, so I will create what we what uh, some kind of a layout here to hold things together just and give them some label. So I press Shift A here and go to layout and frame. Okay, and we have this little what looks like an empty rectangle that's not even uh, a node which is not. So I will select all these guys, which are, I know now that they are the representation of our wood barrel without the planks, right? Yeah, this is our wood without the planks, okay? So I'll drag these guys and move them here over this layout frame I created and let go. And this will expand the frame to contain all these nodes that I moved together here, okay? And uh, while this is selected, now I can move them together like one note, okay? And to give it a better uh, look, I will press N to expand the uh, properties panel here and give it a label, and I will call it wood, simply. And I will check the color box here and give it some brown color, just to make it easier to see. So here we have this guy called wood and it's brown so it's easier to yeah, be here's our wood okay and uh, I'll even make the name bigger here so I'll increase the label size to what uh, 50 okay and just take this color around no doubt of the way and this by default this frame uh, I won't call it a node this frame uh, expands and shrinks by default with the, the content. So it's as big as the content uh, is taking space. And we can uh, disable this effect by uh, selecting it, of course, and removing this shrink. So now if we bring this down, it won't shrink. Okay. And uh, now also we can, uh, if we try to make it bigger and smaller and control its size. To a certain extent, okay, cannot be smaller than its content. So let's go back here to what we were doing. So Control Shift left click on the color ramp. This is where we have white and black, and we want this white lines not to be too white and too clean. We want to uh, throw some noise at them, okay? And this is the noise we want to throw at them. So I will mix this somehow. I'll press Shift A and add, uh, go to Converter and add a math node. Since we're using this as a factor, we are using black and white data. Let, let's use a math node rather than using a color mix node. Okay. So I'll link the factor here and I will link the color. That's fine. And let's press Control Shift, left click here to see the. Uh, Result. Now remember, black is what is using the wood material, and white was what's using the dark, the uh, space between the planks material. Okay, and here what we did with this combination is uh, actually not uh, going to work well for us because, well, let's try this. Let's use this as a vector here between these two shaders instead, and control shift left click the mix shader. And this will make the shader, the material looks uh, unrealistic, uh, actually, okay? It's uh, not the way we want it, okay? It's not even, it doesn't even look dirty, it looks like, uh, I don't know. And that's because, let's go back to this view here, and that's because we want to keep the black black. We just want to uh, cloud some of this white so it doesn't, it's not pure white. So instead of using add, the default add here as a method, I will click this and we'll use multiply. Okay, 
and you can barely see a thing here but there is an effect okay but since the control shift left the noise since the noise shader the it's not dark enough i will just come here and press and add a color ramp to give it more more of a contrast and bring the black here and bring the white here so here wherever it's black it will look like it's not even disconnected so it looks like there's some dirt that makes these two planks look like they are connected here so let's check how this looks like so go back to the mix shader shift left control shift left click and this is a bit too much actually we almost like dissolved all our lines okay so while we are in the full view of our material I will come here and control this color ramp for the noise to make it appear better and continue to fiddle with these two values here to the left and to the right increase the contrast and decrease it just to give it this look we want planks to still be distinguishable easily but we want them to uh, dissolve in some small areas okay so maybe i will increase the scale here set to 25 i will make it uh, more of 50 okay i want smaller noise and yeah this more see here and again like what we did here with the wood material uh, i want to do the same here for the planks so where are our planks? Well, this is the wood. And I would say that these are, just bring this guy here. These are our planks. So I'll bring this here, this here, just organize them a bit. And this is very rough organization. We have other methods to do this better, but uh, let's not uh, make this uh, part of the tutorial even longer. So press Shift A and go to Layout, Frame, put it here, here, in order to be able to select all of these, and press G and put them on top of it, and contain them within this layout. Okay, and again, I will call this planks, and change the color, and keep it gray. And bring this again to the size and check shrink and bring this guys here so we can see the name here it says blanks. And now after doing this and you look at this combination, let's go from right to left again. We have a mixed shader that's mixing two shaders. Okay, a dark shader simpler than the other shader, which is the wood shader. Okay, so both of them are principal BSDF, but they have different values here. Linked. Okay, so this is as simple as a mix of two shaders, and we're using a factor, a wave texture, troubled a bit by a noise section. Okay, these color ramps here, we're using them just to control the intensity and the contrast of the noise texture and the wave texture. This shader here has a bumpness where we have to we want this black lines to be engraved in to look like uh, there are the spaces between the two planks okay and here we have the wood and the wood we have a combination of two colors controlled by a noise texture and the same noise texture we're using with different color ramp uh, node to control the roughness and to control the bumpiness of the of the wood okay and that's it that's everything in it actually okay so i will just press the forward slash button to exit the uh, local view and press and hold z and bring the mouse up and release z to go to the render view or just press this guy here and here's the texture the basic texture for our barrel i hope you enjoyed this tutorial this part i hope you didn't find it too long uh, in order to uh, 
if you want, if you want, missed something and you don't want to rewatch the whole thing about creating this again, I'll just expand this here on the screen. So you can pause and look at all the node system here. Okay. And uh, see you next one.